Hello, in this video you will witness an overview of the archaic period of ancient Egypt, this is an introduction that will allow you to understand later the following videos, which develops in more detail the first and second dynasty of pharaohs that make it up. The archaic period of Egypt is also known as the Tainite or early dynastic period and runs from 3150 BC to 2890 BC, it is therefore a historical period that marks the beginning of the dynastic history of ancient Egypt. At that time the capital of the Egyptian empire was located in the city of Tinis or Tiz, where the government was exercised through a strong monarchical power, which was developed by only two lineages of kings, this set of monarchs are called the first and second dynasty, these being considered the first pharaohs as the unifiers of Egypt. Let's talk about the characteristics of this monarchy and its expansion. We are at the beginning of this period and we are already beginning to glimpse a complex and effective system of state organization in whose center is a monarchy as strong as accepted and around which revolve in perfect harmony both political and spiritual life, which became almost a constant throughout the history and development of ancient Egypt. We are located at a time when it seems that the ancient imperial capital of Upper Egypt Nurgen, in Greek Hierakompolis, was moved to the city Memphis. Memphis was located near where the Nile River extends its arms to form the delta of the river that merges it with the Mediterranean Sea, it is therefore an enclave with geostrategic and geoeconomic characteristics of relevance, where indeed the monarchy had not only the residence but direct control. To this decision must be added the fact that the monarchy possessed an outstanding military character, being the king personally or his most direct delegates who were in charge of keeping away, and in a certain way controlled in the borders, the nomadic peoples, with a special attention to the Libyans in the Western Front, while the control of the mines and precious stones in the southern and eastern fronts was assured. Egypt advanced towards the first cataract, absorbing the cities of Elephantine and Siena, present Aswan, strategic points for the expansion towards Nubia, of little agrarian development, but with important mining and commercial centers. From the second pharaoh Aha there is evidence of expeditions to Nubia. As for the nomadic peoples, it is known that Aha received tribute from the Libyans, and that his successor Dyer made expeditions as far as the Red Sea. These expeditions were generally linked to the possession of the exploitation of the mines of the region. There is also evidence of campaigns in Den's time to the Sinai for the control of the mines and against the Libyans. An increasingly strong state with clear expansionist aspirations deployed a cultural policy based on the unification between Upper Egypt, where the monarchy came from, and Lower Egypt. In order to make this strategy of assimilation between the two territories possible, a series of measures were put in place, among which we can highlight. The adoption by the pharaoh of the representative symbols of the north and the south, as is the case of the red crown of Lower Egypt and the white crown of Upper Egypt. Allegorical and symbolic celebrations of unification, attested in the reign of Aha. A policy of marriage alliances, through mixed marriages between the king and members of the nobility of the territories of interest, as in the case of the city of Sais, who are assigned names of gods or goddesses, which gives certainty of the strong relationship between the political and religious spheres, in the same way, mixed marriages were carried out among the nobility, as a way to ensure solidarity among elites related to the monarchical power. Another front was constituted by the construction of temples in Lower Egypt, thus reproducing not only the architectural forms, but the whole system of ritualization and administration by a priestly elite related to the monarch. Assimilation of architectural styles of the north and south, especially in the royal tombs. These were located both in Abydos, Upper Egypt, and Saqqara, Lower Egypt. Same gods, same temples, same elites, same priestly order, same rites, same forms and same backgrounds, would thus become pillars of assumption of both territories. In terms of economy and society, it should be noted that the Egyptian economy is closely linked to the political apparatus. The pharaohs promoted works of canalization for irrigation, thus increasing agricultural yields sponsored by a strong and unified state, through access to economic resources emanating from the collection of profits obtained from crops in an economy where the agricultural and livestock sector were primary generators to which with the growth was gradually accompanied by a trade, in search of surplus capital fruit of that same growth, although it would soon be involved in civil wars. Arising from conflicts of interest. Archaeology attests to the construction of Memphis around 2900 BC, and therefore urban development, coincides with agrarian development which led to greater access to foodstuffs and the consequent growth of the population. In addition, the city of Saqqara, near Memphis, was one of the main centers of royal burial. Trade grew gradually, having two main streams, Nile upstream, Nubia, and towards the so-called Levant, easternmost coastal strip of the Mediterranean, which includes present-day Israel, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, and the Palestinian territories. 
Trade with Nubia was predominantly overland, as successive cataracts prevented navigation far beyond Elephantine, on the border with Nubia. For its part, trade with the Levant was the main source of timber. In this sense, from the end of the Archaic period pottery remains were found showing boats with oars. From this it could be deduced that a technological revolution took place at this time, and also the increase of trade. As for Nubia and the southern and eastern front, military expansion ensured the mining of stone and gold. International trade, for its part, served to satisfy, in addition to wood, stone and metals for bronze production, a growing demand for luxury goods, including precious metals and stones. In addition, for social reasons, mentalities, funerary cult rituals and ostentation as a reflection of political or economic hierarchy, as a demonstration of power, generated a large local demand from which benefited an industry dedicated to the construction of funerary objects, royal statues and all kinds of monuments which was ensured by the military presence in productive areas. As for the satisfaction of the basic needs of the population, the food production arrived in the form of taxes to the political apparatus, being stored in the so-called royal silos, and later distributed among the non-rural population. In this sector the artisans began to be constituted, dedicated in particular to the work of wood and metal. The rest of the population was made up of the sector dedicated to river and international trade, which was largely made up of the political apparatus, the army, the bureaucracy and, of course, the royal family. Regarding religion, at this time the local gods of the cities and religious centers began to take on national importance, often through the so-called syncretism or assimilation of gods and cults of different origins. One of the most relevant cases is that of Osiris, a benefactor god related to fertility, commerce, and essentially to life after death, originally from the lower Egyptian city of Busiris who was assimilated with a god of similar characteristics from the upper Egyptian city of Abydus, a city that consolidated its authority as a religious and funerary center by becoming the place where the pharaohs were buried, equally important was the fact of the adoption of Osiris and his son Horus. Within the symbolism of royalty. Possibly, at this time the myth of the wars between Osiris and Horus against Seth began to take shape, although its definitive wording is later. Although everything commented up to now would give an idea of harmony and concord, in this epoch, it is possible to observe signs of internal conflicts that seem to be related in a certain way. With an opposition of Lower Egypt in front of the centralism advocated on the part of the monarchy of Upper Egypt. These signs begin to be evidenced in the reign of Adiab, who apparently had to face rebellions in Lower Egypt, despite some signs of rapprochement, such as his marriage to a Memphite. His successor, Semerjet, is seen as a usurper. These two kings, as well as a third Hukka were buried, like their predecessors, in the city of Abydus in Upper Egypt. To this, we must add the use of a series of symbols by the royalty, such as the god Horus, son of Osiris and therefore related to the white crown of Upper Egypt, instead of the double crown, a very sensitive issue for the population not included. All this evidence is an inclination of the monarchy towards Upper Egypt and a process of sedition on the part of Lower Egypt. Although these indications are diluted in the reigns of his successors, Hotepsegemwi and Nebra were buried in Lower Egypt, burials that could not avoid the serious disturbances that occurred later. Peribsen eliminated the god Horus of the royal symbology and replaced it by the god Seth, which recalls the myth of the war between Horus and Seth, this indicates that the civil war unleashed under his successor Jaisgem had a marked religious character, being a war more than between territories, between followers of one and another god. The rebellion even attacked the city of Neket, ancient religious center of the monarchy of Upper Egypt, which gives an idea of its magnitude. Finally, Jay's gem prevailed, as evidenced by the reliefs on the basis of two statues, in which the dead enemies are shown and in which the king is significantly represented with the white crown of Upper Egypt. Both the change of name from Jay's gem, meaning one power, to Jay's Jemui meaning two powers, and the return to the symbolism of Horus, indicate that the northern rebels took as their emblem the god Seth, as opposed to the Horus of the monarchy. For more history videos, visit my channel in the video description. Next video, the first dynasty of the Egyptian pharaohs.